Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week marks the 150th anniversary of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Today, the Met is the largest museum in the United States and the fourth most visited museum in the world. To celebrate, we are going to explore five must-see masterpieces that can be found there. We've already covered a few famous pieces like Madame X and Duccio's Madonna, so those videos have been linked down below. The Met is a partner of Google Arts and Culture, so I highly recommend following along using the links in the description box. Without further ado, let's get started. In 1866, a group of Americans staying in Paris came up with an idea that would change the trajectory of art culture forever. They decided that it was time for America to get its own museum. Their goal was to open a place where people could learn about art and culture for free. By making it accessible, they hoped it would become a new center of learning in the States. One of these founders was John Taylor Johnston. He was a businessman who made his fortune through the railroad system. His personal art collection helped to seed the Met's foundational collection. It took a few years to get everything in place for the new museum. On April 13, 1870, the New York State Legislature granted the incorporation that allowed the Metropolitan Museum of Art to be created. Three years later, a stipulation was added to the charter that made sure the museum stayed free to the public. It took 10 more years before the Met was moved to its permanent location at 5th Avenue and 82nd Street. It was designed by Calvert Vaux and Jacob Ray Mould in the Ruskin Gothic style. This look was not super popular, so a new facade was designed. This neoclassical design remains to this day and was designed by one of the Met's founders, Richard Morris Hunt, in 1902. The first piece of art in the Met's collection was a Roman sarcophagus. Over the next 150 years, its collection has grown by leaps and bounds. Major acquisitions include the Cessnola collection, as well as the first Matisse to be owned by a museum. The Met holds a stunning five of the known 35 paintings by Johannes Vermeer. It also has about 26,000 objects dating from ancient Egypt, meaning that this museum holds the largest number outside of the Cairo Museum. In order to house all these pieces, the Met is actually made up of three different buildings. The original one on Fifth Avenue, the Brewer Building, which holds the modern and contemporary art, and the Cloisters Building, where medieval works are housed. Now that we have gone over the history of the Met, we can move into the art. The Annunciation Triptych, also known as the Marode Altarpiece, is a masterpiece of Netherlandish art. Although there isn't an artist's signature, it is believed that this work was created in the workshop of Robert Campan between 1427 and 1432. The left side features portraits of the donors who would have used this altarpiece for private devotion. The right panel shows Mary's husband Joseph working in his carpentry studio making mouse traps. The center work is what makes this piece so famous. We see a beautiful Annunciation scene. The angel Gabriel is telling the Virgin Mary that she will bear the Son of God. There are several details that are added to this painting to help us understand that Mary is pure and the perfect woman to carry Jesus Christ. She sits delicately with her hair unbound and reading a book of hours. The angel Gabriel is about to interrupt her devotions, but this moment is peaceful. The lily in the vase on the table and the hanging towel are traditional symbols of female purity. In the 1960s, Egypt decided to build a new dam near Aswan. However, it threatened several important sites, including the famous temple at Abu Simbel. They asked for help, and one of the countries that answered the call was the United States. President Kennedy sent the Army Corps of Engineers to Egypt to help save the historical architecture and religious sites. As a thank you, Egypt presented America with a temple of Dendor. It was placed in the Met in a specially constructed room. A large window wall allows light to stream in, while a moat represents the Nile River. Finished around 10 BCE, the Temple of Dendor was a part of Emperor Augustus's Egyptian building campaign. It was dedicated to Isis and Osiris, but it wasn't just a religious building. In ancient Egypt, temples were also connections to the natural world. This structure is built of sandstone and decorated with relief carvings of papyrus and lotus plants. The columns are also designed to look like papyrus growing up out of the Nile. No great art collection would be complete without a work by Rembrandt. This particular painting, dating from around 1653, is one of the best at the Met. It features the great philosopher Aristotle as he contemplates the bust of ancient author Homer. Interestingly enough, Aristotle is dressed in clothes that are more appropriate to Rembrandt's time, not 4th century BCE Greece. The gold chain on his neck not only symbolizes his status, but serves as a gift from his most famous pupil, Alexander the Great. For centuries, Art historians have grappled with understanding the meaning behind this work. 
Some have suggested that the beam of light coming in from the top left corner symbolizes the beginning of human enlightenment. Others believe the dark tones symbolize Aristotle coming up with a new theory. Either way, it is a fascinating work. The Met purchased it in 1961 for $2.3 million. At the time, this made it the most expensive art purchase ever in a public or private sale. Similar to the Sphinx of ancient Egypt, Assyrian Lamassu were mythological protection creatures. They have the head of a man, the body of either a bull or a lion, and the wings of an eagle. Lamassu sculptures were placed outside of palaces and public buildings. There are many examples in Western museums because archaeologists took them from Iraq to their home countries. These particular ones were built as a part of Assurbanipal's II palace at Nimrod. They actually have five legs. This is so they could be viewed as standing from the front and walking from the side. Painted in 1787, this neoclassical masterpiece is an incredible part of the Met's collection. Jacques-Louis David shows viewers the story of the death of the philosopher Socrates. He was sentenced to death on the charges of corrupting youth of Athens with his ideas. Instead of fearing his fate of drinking poisonous hemlock, Socrates uses it as one last opportunity to teach his students. They are in various stages of grief and despair, but Socrates is confident in his lesson. David uses strong lines and clean composition to convey the message of intellect's triumph. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is one of the greatest American institutions. Thanks to a group of like-minded people, the United States and the world are able to enjoy a collection of over 200,000 objects that span the entirety of human existence. These are only five of these works, so I highly recommend checking out their page on Google Arts and Culture. Happy 150th anniversary to this amazing museum.